Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to the channel. Uh, if you are seeing some crazy mess it's because I am fiddling with some settings but I'm about to explain myself in one second. Um, so what I'm doing is now is that I'm trying to start a game against the engine Commodore or rather the Commodore engine the version that is actually freely available and the reason why I'm doing that is purely because uh, in two days time um, Saturday and Sunday Australian Grandmaster David Smurden is going to play a match I hope you guys can see me the mic is a bit far away let's put it this way but then it might interfere with uh, the picture no it's all good uh david smurden grandmaster david smurden the one and only smurfo the author of smurden scandinave uh, scandinavian and also the author of a very recent book uh, which was um what was it again uh swindles in chess he's going to play a match against komodo uh with night odds and uh that's a hugely fascinating story are you gonna make a move dude or what um, and uh, the reason why I'm announcing it other than the fact that uh, Smurfo is a guy who deserves uh, every chance to promote his chess activities is because I'm actually going to co-cast the whole event and not only am I going to co-cast it but I'm going to co-cast it with uh, none other than chess commentator legend Evgeny Miroshnichenko um, who is an incredibly well-established commentator uh, other than an incredibly powerful grandmaster who used to be just about 2700 at the peak of his chess career. I think we are staring at an empty board. So let me just set it up again. Uh, and so this is uh, a, a really fascinating uh, stuff really and uh, also it uh, kind of gives me an opportunity to return to... Oh no, the dude just played a move I think. Uh, oh no! He played d4, I saw it. Did you? Okay, whatever. Let's go again. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a great opportunity for me to return to my beloved uh, uh, streaming, at least to some degree, even if I'm a guest streamer, because it's going to be broadcast on, uh, on uh, Yevgeny's stream. But uh, nonetheless, it's going to be streamed and that is an awesome thing. And I'm really excited and looking forward to doing that. Okay, technically I think I started this thing. So now I think I'm playing against Komodo. But we have uh, fiddled a little bit with the settings. So um, I think the first few moves, he's going to go very cautious and careful. In fact, I tried it out once and he started with C4. So the point is there will be six games played. All the, I like how I show five when there are six games played. 3-3 uh, three, three with uh, either knight missing. So there will be three knights without the G1, three knights without the B1 knight. David is going to be black in all six games. I think the time control is going to be s similar to what I'm doing here, which is a 15-10. And let's see what happens. I mean, Commodore has had a fantastic run in the past with uh, playing matches against humans with odds. If I recall rightly, he played probably more than once against Nakamura is the one I remember. And there were multiple games with pawn odds, pawns odds, and from positions where the computer was very, very clearly disadvantaged. But I believe it has never taken... It has never been taken to this incredibly steep step where a whole entire piece is missing and we are essentially kicking off from the starting position. So what I'm doing here now really is just fiddling around and, and playing a random game and I'm just trying to test out the waters to see what really our chances are like as humans against an incredibly powerful engine, but from odds that seem to be irrecoverable, if that makes sense. So I don't want to sound arrogant, arrogant or come across as arrogant, because I always think that whenever it comes to human versus engine, I just go like, yeah, nah, forget about it. Uh, unplug the machine, smash the screen, uh, kick the computer, make sure that you destroy everything and then walk away as a superior home human because you can punch bigger than they do. Any other case, if it's a chessboard business, we are dead. But with the night dots, 
it's too much guys it's too much and uh one of the best things about this too is that um david published the whole thing uh on his facebook profile and he invited people to bet on or not so much to bet but to guess what the outcome will be and uh, it's quite fascinating to see that obviously it has attracted a lot of attention from uh, uh, the chess community or at least the part of the chess community who are friends with Dave and uh, the, the bets were ranging quite far from massive computer victory to massive human victory but those who bet I think or rather who thought that uh, the human would come out victorious were in majority and uh, I am one of them um, but then again, we really don't know what the computer will be able to pull off. Um, we have briefly been in touch with the programmer Grandmaster Larry Kaufman as well, and uh, he was actually trying to fine tune the the machine for the event so that uh, it would do its best. I understand, although I have got no knowledge whatsoever about uh, programming computers, is that you actually need to fiddle with the initial settings because somehow th this degree of odds just messes with the computer's mind and so serious adjustments need to be made uh, apparently when you are programming a machine um, with such odds to play against uh, against anyone really it doesn't matter whether it's playing against another human or another computer uh, in order to make sure that it basically gets the most out of what very little is offered so yeah, very exciting times. So I'm going to publish uh, the link um, in the description of this video for the stream. It is going to be in an absolutely ungodly hour for the rest of the world. Actually, not quite. For America, it's going to be awesome because it's going to be played 10 o'clock Brisbane time, which for most of Europe is falling between 11 p.m. and 2 a.m., I would say. Well, no, actually, it's more like 4 a.m. at midnight, depending on how much Western Europe you are. The further west we go, the worse it gets. So I know that Evgeny, my co-caster, is going to be up at 3 o'clock in the morning. So that doesn't really bode well for the rest of Europe, right? Okay, so Europe, bad luck, but you need to get up anyway. It's um, We are in quarantine anyway, the whole world. So you have got nothing else to do anyway, and sleeping is overrated. So... Yeah, let's just uh, wake the heck up and, and watch the chess. For America, it's going to be awesome because that's just uh, watching something meaningful instead of uh, brain dead Netflix. So, yeah, looking good, looking good. And by the way, I'm looking red hot here too. I would even like my position here with an extra night. <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, but yeah, th this is, this is, this is uh, going to be fun. It really is going to be fun. Um, so yeah, I'm very excited. Uh, the whole thing is going to happen on the chess.com platform. So you can also access the stream and the live games via chess.com as well as uh, Miro's stream. And uh, that's that. C5. Should I go B6? B4, A5, A3. I mean, I could trade a ton of stuff there if I wanted to. Let's just develop, yeah? Let's just see what, what he has. I know it comes across as extremely arrogant, but I even feel guilty for thinking. Like, it just feels wrong. Like, I'm a piece up. You should be resigning, dude. Get out of my face. Uh, and obviously, I'm not going to get an easy run here, or I would be surprised if uh, I, I get an easy win. Is he going to play b4? Or is he going to play bishop e2, perhaps? I don't know. Maybe I can already stir the pot with e5 next, and if pawn takes the knight g4, which is a very typical motif in this line with the knight on even. We'll see. We'll see, but this is fun. Oopsies. Oopsies. I hope that uh, it didn't get messed up for you guys. 
Okay, I just got played B4, but I think I messed up the screen. Okay, let's check this again. Okay, we're back, I think. Okay, sorry about that, but uh, this is a different uh, sort of way to record it from the usual, my usual recording when I record on uh, Lee Chess or whatever. This is an entirely different story, so I hope that that was just a minor hiccup and now you get the correct screen. And you still see the chess ball. So yeah, he did play p4. At least my move prediction was correct. Actually, I was thinking about playing e5 and I didn't do it. Because it's d, knight, g4. Yeah, whatever. Let's just castle, castle, and then I'll play knight e4. And I'll start trading pieces and uh, win the end game. That's the plan. I do wonder what game plan David is arriving, uh, by the way, to the whole business. But... Uh, yeah, I guess it's tricky because the computer is also preparing or rather is being prepared. So it's a bit of a mind game. I don't envy any chess players who ever had to face the computer without odds. It's funny how I can't pre-move. It's such a such a an awkward feeling when you know that there is a whole team of humans preparing a computer against you and then there is a computer itself that is meant to be already stronger than you. It's quite a lot of psychological pressure, really. I mean, I could take with the pawn and then just chuck a knight on d5. But I really want to be positionally greedy and play for e5. I'm not, I don't want to give an inch. Literally, not an inch. So even I'm I'm willing to uh, mess up my own pawn structure. If I don't have to, I won't do it. Look, e one. Okay. I really want to play e5. I'm very itchy, very itching, very, I don't know, I'm very something. Actually, if I play a5, then after b5, e5 is, is really causing headache. Let's do that. So now I'm expecting a3. But if that's the case, I will just trade on the a5 like a madman. Maybe, maybe not. Also, I was looking at bishop f6 with the idea of e5, but then bishop d6, rook e8, f4. It was interesting. Although then I can come back to e7 and trade, trade, trade. Nothing like trade, trade, trade. Yeah, a3. So I actually don't want to trade trade rook a8, queen a8, queen a uh, queen a1, queen a8 because then queen b2 and rook a1 sends me back home. I really want to play e5. And also I was thinking about f6 by the way at one point, but uh, it seems a little bit on the crazy side. Okay, I'm curious to see what the engine will do if I play bishop f6. What happened with my clocks? Oh, here they are. Can you see guys the clocks? Yeah, I just put it back up. Okay, so Komodo is currently down to 8 minutes versus my 14. Haha. <laughs> Not only am I smarter, but I'm faster too. Should just call it off now. Human wins. Peace up. Thank you. Let's go to the pub. Except... You can't even go to the pub. I'm actually practicing my one-liner jokes now for tomorrow, so maybe you shouldn't watch this and then watch me tomorrow cracking the same silly jokes. I'm expecting f4. But then bishop e7. I'm, I'm gonna trade, dude. I'm gonna trade. I'm coming for ya. Maybe it's just gonna allow e5 and then let me take on d4. But that's when his position is going to begin to crumble because then uh, d4 will be permanently weak. 
And so after that, if I start trading like cray cray, then he will have to dedicate more and more resources to the defense of the default pawn. And since I have a piece more, that will be goody. That will be goody. F3. Okay, I will just come back, I guess. What's the story time wise, gentlemen? I love how there is a manual clock there as well as a digital one. Would be funny if there was a flag too. Flag fall! What flag? Some of the X or Z or Y or whatever generations we're talking about, they don't even understand anymore what flag fall means. Okay, so we expected this, except that I was picturing this with my bishop on e4 because I was a little bit too optimistic, right? That being said, after bishop e7, he will totally have to take. I will take back and then still f6, e5 is the plan. But I want to chuck this bishop back in his face first, just to make sure that I trade as much as possible. I feel really dirty about this. Not. <laughs> Actually, yeah, I need to watch b5 at one point. He will start pushing this in and then try to... But then again, the bishop on e4 is such a boss in controlling a b1. I'm quite proud of the fact, by the way, that I'm guessing a lot of their moves correctly. I don't know if I should be scared or alarmed or worried or none of the above. Yeah, what I would expect now, I don't know if I play this really well, this bishop takes, queen takes, pawn c6 takes, and then queen a4 to turn up the heat on c6 a little bit. Maybe I will just defend it. I quite like the fact that he can't get to the b because of my bishop is totally butchering that. Okay, I reckon things are going well. Obviously I'm playing with a very, very bad attitude, which David should not ever be doing, and uh, he's much better of a competitor than I am, so he's not going to fall into this mistake. Uh, but I'm essentially playing without thinking, so I just play natural moves with occasional checks of am I doing everything correctly or not. And occasional checks does not include me checking uh, my Facebook feed while the computer is thinking. Uh, okay, so that's again everything as per expected and either Queen A4 or take the Queen A4 is going to come now. Guaranteed. I mean, I would play that letter on the computer, right? So what's the story? And I still can't pre-move. But as soon as I click the clock... Oh, no, don't do that, don't do that. Oh, boy, I just messed it up again, did I? Sorry, guys. Oh, bugger. No. Okay, how do I get this back? Minimize OBS. Get back to this, get back to this. By the way, they played okay too. Okay, it's still not back. How do I do this? Mm. Okay, this is frustrating now. Okay, let's go back. Okay, I don't want you to show me this dude. I want you to show me the board. So rook a2 was played. He obviously wants to play it to rook b2. Which is a much better plan than I thought. And now when I would like to really shine... Ah! I don't know how to bring it back. Okay, I really don't know if you have got visual of the board anymore or not. I'm afraid you don't.
Okay, I have no idea if you guys have got the correct visual or not now. I don't know how I fixed it before, but now I don't seem to be able to. Ah! Keep on clicking on this thing. Okay, I have no idea. Um, I'm in a bit of a struggle town now. Rook B2, Rook B7. This is the other thing. It psychologically messes with your head. That you enhance threats in your head that are not really that threats, that are not really that serious. Is G5 a completely cuckoo move here? I really like this idea. Yeah, let's, let's, let's start playing actively. Let's see what happens. Hmm. Ha ha! I brought it back. Okay, cool. So I played G5. I played G5. Um and I feel completely crazy about playing g5, but I just didn't like the fact that despite of the fact that I'm a piece up, I'm not really playing for anything aggressive. And um, yeah, after take, take queen a4, rook c8 and rook b2, I felt like rook b7 was coming in and I just felt a bit like I was giving them too much air, if that makes sense. Also, at certain points, I may consider sacking the piece, but again, it just feels like a cheap way to to utilize the fact that I have got an extra piece altogether. By the way, just for the record, in case I do win this game, off chance, but let's just entertain this silly idea. Uh, Larry did tell me what kind of type of settings I should play with to maximize the computer's power. And also he told me that my computer is nowhere near good enough without knowing what my computer was, which is quite funny, but he's totally spot on. Uh, compared to what Komodo is going to be running on uh, in the weekend. So probably these factors um, actually contribute, if I win or even if I do have a chance to win this, it, these factors will contribute to that one way or another. So yeah, that's just to to consider as an extra piece of information. I'm really tempted to take this. I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm really, really tempted to take this. I'm also tempted to just simply play queen f6 and pin a piece to d4. And I'm also tempted to play king h8 and rook g8. Okay, let's let's just uh, let's just play positionally sound chess and just play for. Yeah, I'm basically just trying to cook him. Like, lose your time, buddy, and that's all I'm after. I wonder if he's going to eventually speed up or if. Um, Yeah, anything is going to happen when it gets into time trouble or whether because of in time trouble its quality of play going to drop. Okay, so now I believe C6 is not hanging because I can hurt this. Yeah, I want to be a cocky bastard and call it a bluff. So Rook B2 is now problematic to execute for him because I have Knight takes C5. And if he takes on c6 twice, then I can pick up the d4 pawn and the c5 pawn and every single pawn on the board. I expect king h1 now. Boy, f4 was hanging, I didn't even notice. <laughs> wow, quality chess. <laughs> okay, um, interesting. All right.
So I'm hanging a5 because now I'm also hanging d4 for him. If he plays rook d1, I'm thinking I'm gonna go rook g8, queen a5, queen h4. g3, knight f6. Is that total rubbish? Probably. Okay, g3, I want it to come here, right? Three minutes fifty for the engine. Again, I expect Rook D one. Is it valid to push this dude up at all? H five, H four. So Rook D one, H five, Queen A five, H four. Holy cow, that's like deadly. Dude had to go home. You dead, bro. I'm really tempted now to do something like queen up and bring the horse in. Yeah, that's... You're dead, buddy. You dead. You dead. You died. You did. This is usually when I get slapped in the face so hard that uh, it's not even funny, but uh, it's very difficult for me to believe that I'm going to lose to uh, pieces that are lined up on the first and second rank. What's the time? 250. Yeah, it's not looking good, bro. Not looking good at all. I've got knight f6 incoming, I've got h5, h4 incoming. Not looking good. Right, so this is it guys. Um, that's gonna be the match on the weekend. I'm very excited. We'll see how it's going to play out. I actually expected him to come back to this pawn, um, but I don't care. I'm coming. F I'm going for the kill now. Take me if you want. Queen a5, horse f. No pawn h4. Queen c3 only. And then horse f6. Oh no, actually he has got rook e3 as well, but yeah, it has to be bad. Horse f6 is going to create knight g4 threat. Yeah, it's too much, too much. Too much computer on your bike. On your bike. Quite frankly, I just wanted to double up on the G and then go caveman on him. Yeah. Let's just do that. Right? Just go caveman. Look at across and kill, kill, kill. Two minutes left, boys. Two minutes. Rook e3, rook across, tuck, tuck, a4. Um, and we are going to go from there. So the idea now is I can opt to bring the horse in. Take, take, a4, knight f6. I don't know if knight g4 is a threat yet because bishop h4 is possible. Although then knight e3, bishop takes, knight takes, and then g3 is like, oh my god, bleeding out big time. So now this is hanging, right? 
not that I am really that materialistically materially inclined, but I just don't understand why I can't take this. Rookie for pony for d5 check. Queen e5. This feels like a bluff to me. But again, I don't want to give him anything at all. What's the time? Nine o'clock, okay. One minute left, one minute fifteen. And uh, the Commodore Dragon is going to be hunted down. And that is my prediction for tomorrow, by the way, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I think that the Dragon will be slain. Really? Are you kidding me, dude? I mean, if there was one thing that was better than a bishop on e4, it's gonna be a horse, right? Also known as the knight. Rook takes, can I go sexy and take this? Takes rook f, rook g2, nah, it's a bit cocky. On the other hand, if rook takes now, I can check down the b5 pawn. <laughs> <laughs> that would be materialism at its finest, right? I mean, I'm, I'm seriously, I see no reason why I wouldn't do that. Because queen check... Queen e1 maybe? Queen takes b5. I mean, my queen is a little bit offside there, but who cares? So knight e4, queen d3, tuck, tuck. Knight takes... Actually, yeah, I can't, can't resist going in. And I had queen b1, queen b5, that was a brain dead victory, but uh, yeah, let's see if this is gonna cut it. So queen c2, I was thinking h3 and then I can pick up the f4 pawn, which is a meaningful pawn. h takes, h takes, knight takes g3 is also a move. Rook g3, rook g3, and at no point can he take me, right? So take, take, knight, take, check. King g7, queen takes, knight takes, checks also wins. Yeah, let's do that. Let's do that. GG, on your bike. On your bike. I just tuck you, yeah? Tuck, tuck, tuck. Just quadruple checking before we deliver the deadly blow. Takes, queen takes, knight takes, rook check, king out. Yeah, that end game is totally dead for them. Yep, on your bike. In case I haven't said that yet, 55 times. Alrighty, Tuck is gonna go check. Then he's going to take me. I will take him back with the king. D4 pawn is hanging. I will come across here, eat everything. Um, GG. Primo is still not on. Unfortunately, but who cares? Oh, tuck there, that's not gonna make a big difference, brah. I'll take back. You envy my beautiful pawn chain, hey? You've got isolated pawns. My coach told me they are bad for you. Oh boy, I'm gonna enjoy myself tomorrow if human wins. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, so please don't, don't make a false assumption based on how this game went. I, I'm pretty sure that I played, in fact, I'm certain I played against an inferior version of Komodo on an inferior computer, on inferior settings. So um, the match tomorrow, I predict, is going to look nothing like this. Check. 
in case you didn't realize the computer, you are in check. All right, give me the ponies. Which one do I take first? Totally doesn't matter. Okay, give me this one first. Oh no, he's attacking me. All right, I'll drop back. Although I think if I was a more principled move, but hey, what ifs? I like how I don't even have the option of offering a draw, not that I would. Um, rook a3, we all know that you're going to play rook a3. See, I, I'm so reading the computer's mind. I'm just gonna caveman him after a5, rook a6 and play e5, take, d4, king, d5, take, and I will just take all the 17 pieces that are left and that's it. Five seconds, bro, you are in trouble. Oh, you played a5. You're still in trouble, bro, 13 seconds. GG! Do I have to mate him? Oh, he has got a resign function, perhaps. Forward! Forward Kazimierz was uh, the motto of uh, the coach of Mikhail Tal. Tolush. In case you're wondering, his name was Tolush. If I go here, this mighty machine is gonna go there and we're not gonna care. Okay, it's a good deal to me. Boy, if I could predict the lotto numbers the way I predict the, the machine's moves, I would be a rich man. That much is certain. Well, dude, you're taking those, I'm taking these. Nah, I'll take this first. B7 leaves this hanging. Let's see if I can walk into stalemate. That's his only hope now. Got the better of you, bro. Come again tomorrow. We'll see how you go. Maybe it was the fact that I removed the G1 knight. Maybe he has got better ways of playing when the other knight is missing. I don't know. But it feels like the ownage is complete. Okay, let's come home, give him a check, get out of my way. I don't think you can resign. He's a fighter. He's a warrior. He's a predator, in fact. And he is losing on time too. Oh no. No, play a move, play a move. Take my pawn, it's good for you. In fact, I think, uh, I was about to guess that he would. I'm almost winning now if I don't move the rook too, just for the record, he, he. I don't want to be a douchebag though, so I will go up. Yeah, poor bugger is on borrowed time now too. Not that it matters. All right, well guys, sorry to drag this out. Probably you're not watching anymore. I think I told you everything I needed to and uh, what I wanted to. Um, yeah. 
So hopefully the dragon is going to be playing uh, far more uh, accurate and uh, to the point chess than uh, this guy was. And uh, then we are going to be all A-OK. -okay. Player wins! Human! The human wins, baby! Human! Not the player. The human! The human wins. Alrighty, so, ladies and gents, Saturday, Sunday, 10 a.m. Brisbane time. Make sure that you tune in to Yevgeny. Uh, you have any stream. I'm going to post the details in the description of the video. I will see you there. Bye.